You're listening to DraftKings Network. Every fan knows the right player in the right position can be a game changer. Put LifeLock between your identity and identity thieves to monitor and alert you to threats you could miss. Plus, with a U.S.-based restoration specialist on your team, you won't have to face drained accounts, fraudulent loans, or other losses from identity theft alone. All backed by the LifeLock Million Dollar Protection Package. Change the game on identity theft. Save up to 25% your first year at LifeLock.com slash aware. This is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugats Podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by DraftKings. Stay tuned because you'll hear more about DraftKings and all it has to offer throughout the show. DraftKings, the crown is yours. John Cena did 100 push-ups before going out there last night, right? You can't, you can't, no matter what your body looks like, you can't go out there cold, uh, that naked, and uh, not do the push-ups. Put it on the poll, please, Juju, at Levitard Show. Did John Cena do 100 uh, push-ups before going on stage yesterday? Tricep dips, too, you and would, some crunches. You would think that there was a lot of exercise, I would think. We will talk some. Uh, Adnan will be here in a little bit, and David Sampson as well. We are a little bit depleted here. Thank you to everyone who participated last night. It was a lot of fun, and uh, it was really nice to see that we could uh, keep the audience for seven hours of that nonsense. You're welcome. Very nice of you. Um, thanks to everybody except for Stugat. Who, who, uh And Billy. I watched. What'd you think? What were your thoughts? I felt bad for you because for years we heard about your popcorn <laughs> and how great the popcorn recipe yeah. was. And you came in and you seemed very excited. You sauntered in across the red carpet. You presented everybody with your homemade popcorn <laughs> that has a secret recipe. And the first words that I heard in regards to your popcorn was, this tastes weird. Yeah, uh, And I said, that's not that's not good yeah. for Dan's confidence. Uh, that was Lucy, who then <laughs> ate three boxes of the popcorn. Um, I noticed, now she may have done that simply. Takes some getting used to. I, I mean. it, 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 she may have simply been doing that to be, you know, whatever, the, uh, the student who gives the teacher an apple, uh, because I think she might have been being nice, but she did eat three buckets of it. But Billy, you felt bad for Dan, because Dan set the bar very high on the popcorn. There were expectations headed into that you know yeah no and we've heard for a long time and then he came in and i was like oh this is gonna this is gonna well kill. unfortunately <laughs> we're gonna have to get a, a group I, jessica's the only one here from last night um and i was I, here dan i gave my terry rosier analysis after the heat game well you you showed well, up yes much later the audience once, wanted. once the popcorn had gone bad uh once That's the also popcorn true. had been out for four hours <laughs> or six hours i uh, heard a lot of that needs butter um, yeah, a lot of people like butter with their popcorn. That's not how. <laughs> Who doesn't? I mean, I'm, I'm allergic to butter. Uh, I can't have it that way. I can't mm. have butter on things. Okay. Uh, we will get the opinions of the group when the group is here. The group is not here today. So uh, the thing that I wanted to get into from the weekend, though, Stugatz, because at the end of last week, and this is an interesting thing to me, what is happening in the fighting sports where you have the tension of uh, the business of it is the worst. Uh, the employees in the fighting sports are disposable and they are labor that gets exploited by people making money. But we're at an inflection point where uh, many of these people know that they have their own brands, their own power, and that they can exist as their own pay-per-view forces outside of the sport. Floyd Mayweather taught them that. You've heard me say one of the great, whether he can read or not, and I don't know whether he can read the contracts or not, because 50 Cent and others have accused him of being illiterate. Great businessman. Uh, well, I just pioneer. It's yes. beyond great businessman. It's, it's well beyond that. Right. It's a decade, two decades ahead of everybody on business and on owning all your own stuff. But uh, what ends up happening, and we'll get to Jake Paul and Tyson in a second. You can play that video now of uh, Tyson outside in New York walking with a cane, Stugatz, because oh, uh, Jake Paul is fighting a 57-year-old fighter they told me is going to be an underdog in this fight. And I can't imagine why or how that would be even walking with a cane because Jake Paul has not fought someone who's an actual boxer like this. 
But how happy were you when the New York Post yeah. aggregated oh. your take while you were wearing I mean, a Willy Wonka costume? A giant victory for me. It's one of my great, uh, it's one of the great happinesses at this point in my career. <laughs> it's one of the few things that can uh, stir uh, stir genuine emotion from me. Every comment was like, what the hell is this guy wearing? Why does he look like Willy Wonka? For me, it's Joe Mauer. <laughs> it is It is wonderful that I would say uh, publicly, it's not just that I'm wearing a costume while being aggregated, it's the specific specifics of calling him an idiot while I'm dressed that way. And like so I, an idiot. Yes. Thank you, Jessica. That's uh, yes. That's what I was saying. Uh, I, I'm hoping that he uh, that he responds uh, at some point to the costume and wonders how it is that this idiot, meaning me, can be calling him an idiot. There is additional pressure after that video came out on Jake Paul. You can't lose to that guy. I mean, you can't lose to a guy limping around with a cane. You can't, you can't do it. If I'm Tyson, I keep setting the bar lower and lower. I mean. you, uh, if he keeps setting the bar lower and lower, at his age, he won't be able to get under the bar. Uh, he won't be able to get up from being under the bar. But, but before we get to that, because I'm not sure if a UFC fight in America has ever sold a stadium out of that size, Jerry Jones' stadium. I know I could do it in Brazil and Japan and in Spain. I'm not, I mean, maybe some fights in America can, but I don't know if American fights have had a crowd of the size that Jake Paul and Tyson will do. But the thing that I wanted to talk about from the weekend, Stugatz, and it's a slow sports time, and I feel like it slid under the radar and should not have. And the only reason that it slid all under the radar is because Anthony Joshua did to Nganu what Tyson Fury should have done to Nganu, knocked him out coldly in the second round because one of them is a professional boxer and the other is not. And Anthony Joshua made it look very easy because Anthony Joshua was one of the greatest fighters in the sport and in the heavyweight division. But to me, the great accomplishment of the last year in sports is in Ganu getting out from under his $600,000 payday, Stugatz, the last one he got at UFC, getting to real freedom and making in two fights a lot more than he ever would have made as the heavyweight, heavyweight champion of MMA. And to me, the big surprise was that he lasted 10 rounds with and knocked down Tyson Fury. I can't believe that that's something I saw happen because Jake Paul is a good boxer for someone who's not an actual boxer. <laughs> like, this is the space that he occupies where he impresses people because they're like, oh, he can box a little bit. Yeah, he can box a little bit. And he's going to the to, to the guy who was the menace at the height of that division, and even though he's 57 years old, do you remember how he fought? Yeah, of course. What, but, I mean, you remember the style of how he fought. Yes. He's going to go right at Jake Paul because stamina is going to be an issue at 57. In a boxing ring, I believe those are the longest three minutes anybody can experience. Has to be a quick knockout for Mike. Yes, it has to be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, Mike Tyson's walking around with a cane now, and I'm just wondering, should we start calling him Michael Kane? Oh, jeez. Get out. Yep. <laughs> We're understaffed today. The laugh. I mean, what happened there? Out. <laughs> by by <laughs> the way, Canelo Alvarez and uh, Billy Joe Saunders had a, a match in AT&T Stadium that had 73,000 people at it in 2021. So... Oh no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean boxing. I meant uh, I meant MMA is what I what I meant. Uh, and there there I can Canelo fights in Mexico and elsewhere. When I said Japan and Spain and Brazil, it's because I was talking about I don't know if MMA and and I don't know if you can get 70, 80, 90,000 people. How how many how many people does Jerry Jones's stadium hold? Because I don't know. I know near was that AT and T Stadium. I don't yeah. know the names of stadiums and I don't know the sizes of stadiums. I just know that if you're in Texas and you're Jerry Jones, my guess is that you wanted to, uh, you know, show everybody how big your ego is. 
It holds like over 80,000 people. Yeah. It's pretty massive. Yeah, it's like 82,000 people. Well, no, and then you have like boxing configurations where you have everybody on the floor. True. So. With standing room only, it gets up to 105,000 people if they want it to. The, the reason, uh, and of course, I'm inflating the words to try and get aggregated while I'm in a Willy Wonka costume, but the reason that um, I'm calling Jake Paul an idiot is just because I think he's going to lose the fight, obviously, as a business move. It's brilliant, and it's not idiotic. It's exactly uh, Stugatz. His star was dissipating because he wasn't on the rise fighting better and better challengers sure. anymore. He had lost, and this uh, this particular thing is just the freak show of go ahead and throw somebody out there who's going to fill a stadium for you. And I and also I, I some of the Showtime stuff that he was doing had lost its luster, had it not? Like hadn't there hadn't there been claims of like super shitty ratings on the last Last couple of things that he had done because it was just just like he was a YouTube pioneer and now that has slowed considerably even though it's still very strong and the ascent of Jake Paul as a pay-per-view draw was going to head into the toilet but this rescues it is this gonna be his largest viewed thing because of the fact that it's on Netflix and it's Tyson I think Tyson because the MMA guys, he was fighting washed up MMA guys who weren't boxers and didn't have any real punching power. There was no real punching power that he he's he was physically stronger than all of the people he's fighting against, and and he's bigger than all of them. And again, no punching power. It's the right opponent at the right time for Jake Paul. And sadly, and this is a sad state of affairs for boxing. This is the matchup that gets me most excited. This is a matchup that will get me to my TV so, only to see if Mike Tyson can still do it. Okay, so forgive me because he cannot, Stugatz. He fought when he's fighting another fighter. He fought old Roy Jones Jr., and that was just sad. Right. But this gets me to where it is that I was headed with the conversation, which is I think Stugatz is more like people around this fight than – people who love boxing and love MMA, I believe this shift in the sport to the circus freaks, to Conor McGregor fights Floyd Mayweather, and even though it's no good as a boxing spectacle, I think we've crossed over into just be famous. Yep. The way to do it in boxing now <laughs> is either be uh, in boxing or fighting or MMA is be famous, be loud, be, be someone who gets our attention with things other than boxing, other than fighting. Like this is, and I don't, I don't want to be precious about this, but it, there's a certain contamination to it that has almost next to nothing to do with sport. No, it has everything to do with seeing an aging Mike Tyson climb back in the ring. Dan, there are no stars in that sport. There are no stars that are going to get me, the fringe boxing fan, to go watch a boxing match. There are. But, but Mike Tyson brings me back to a time. It's not about Jake Paul. It's about Mike Tyson. No, but, That's it, it. but it's also about your general laziness. and Well, of course. And your need uh, for, for spectacle. And this, I, my need for star power. I'm, I'm not complaining about this. I'm really not. It may sound like it, but I have embraced the idea that, uh, yeah, that you should give the customer whatever it is the customer wants. I am, though, pretty amazed that what the customer wants is always now this thing in fighting. That if you are MMA or boxing, you're going to be niche, but you're never going to have one of those spectacle nights unless you do the circus freak act. But if you're a boxing fan, and you are, Dan, you love boxing, I understand why this would upset you. I know you're saying you're not complaining, but I don't care if boxing fans complain. They have every right to complain. It's a gimmick but fight, I, and I, I'm interested I, in it. I'm not I'm not complaining. I'm just pointing out to people that it has now happened, and in a way that surprises me, it is no longer about sport in fighting. It's about it, entertainment. It's, it is about business and fame. It's business and fame, and then sport is is down the list on whether you're going to have. You have to remember, Stugatz, uh, once upon a time in America, when Ali was king, the heavyweight boxing night was the biggest night in sports. It's been dead for a long time, but now you can't even recreate it unless you make it not about sports and only about the fame. You're saying it's a cheap ploy for attention, 
in a world craving for some credibility, almost like dressing up as Willy Wonka. <laughs> One could say that. Aggregated by a New York Post article. Dan is a lover of the sweet science, and he's upset. He's not going to say it. I'm not it. upset. I mean, I'm he's, not you're upset. Larry Merchant. We all I'm, know this. I'm you not, sound a little upset. You do sound but upset. I'm not, I, you're, that you're they're all merchants? Sport. That all of them are merchants now? <laughs> no, because I will watch this, and I want to see Tyson uh, uh, harm Jake Paul, and I think that... And I think that he wow. will. Um, you sound pretty upset, Dan. It sounds personal. <laughs> you sound at this upset. Point. You sound yeah, broken. Geez. I mean, what is? How is that upset? <laughs> mm, tone. He didn't say physically harm. Maybe like damage his reputation. Emotionally. Emotionally. Hurt him emotionally. Yes. Break him before he so ever gets into the ring. So he's as sad as you ring. are about yes. this. <laughs> but if, I'm not sad about if it. If Mike Tyson sad. wins, Dan, that doesn't mean boxing's coming back. That's Just, correct. I don't know if you're aware of that. You I, sound upset I, by this, okay. and you think you that you wanted to come and you wanted to hurt Jake Paul to restore the glory days of boxing, but that's. There's this a cool Ali exhibit on Miami Beach if you want to go yeah. look at the glory days. You know what? Yeah. Forgive me. Um, I must have communicated this poorly. <laughs> I have trouble with communication. Um, I don't uh, want Mike Tyson to restore boxing and hurt Jake Paul. Uh, to, Are you sure? To signal a victory. Yes. If you let me get through it, I'll explain to you what it is that I meant. Um, I do not want him to restore boxing or hurt Jake Paul to restore the place of boxers in the universe in that time in the 1970s when boxing was king. I want him to hurt Jake Paul because he's Jake Paul. All right, I'm there with you then. <laughs> this potentially is the last great fight, right? I mean, what do you do after Tyson? Hold on, put a costume and then say that again. <laughs> Hello, friends. It's Mike, and a lot has changed over the years. One thing that hasn't, great taste of Miller Lite. It was the original light beer, and to this day, it is still the best one. Miller Lite has more of the taste that you want and less of the stuff that you don't. I'm so grateful for Miller Lite because it supplements all my good times. It makes good times great times. Whether it be football season, basketball season, or baseball season, in all likelihood, your team is not living up to expectations. A few good moments made better by Miller Lite, and the bad times are made less bad thanks to Miller Lite. Oh, I love you, Miller Lite. I love you because you keep it simple. Undebatable quality. Great taste. Only 96 calories. Times change, but you can always enjoy the great taste of Miller Lite. Tastes like Miller time. To get Miller Lite delivered right to your door, visit MillerLite.com Dan, or you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories per 12 ounces. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. As Metal Arc Media continues to grow as a content studio and as a multimedia company, we strive to hire only the best and the most qualified candidates. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, they've made it easy for us to find them. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of the small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash prep. That's linkedin.com slash prep to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Don Lebertard. This is largely performative, but we need to establish at least some reasonable doubt. Yes, exactly. I'm so done. Pull over. Stick out to the top, everyone, with this please story where he pays more than you do. Stugats. I always like leaving Dan on high. Because he's so vulnerable, I just unfairly fade down the chicken to so just <laughs> leave him by himself. <laughs> this is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats. I thought Stugats. Uh, I know a lot of people are talking today in college basketball about the fight between South Carolina and LSU, but I thought the biggest story of the weekend involving South Carolina women's basketball wasn't that game. It was the one before that where they remained undefeated because, um, and forgive me, I do not know the name of the woman who had never before made Camilla Cardoso. A, a three in a, in a game. And out of nowhere, they leave her open at the end of the game. South Carolina is going to lose for the first time in two years in a regular season game. 
You make the correct play by leaving her open, and she banks in a three. She steps back. She could have tied the game with a two, but she steps back to make her first three, to bank in her first three. And um, South Carolina ends up uh, remaining uh, the the new UConn, Stugatz, because nobody can beat them. But Tennessee had them beaten. The bank was open, huh? <laughs> new con. If you see the clip, you can see Don Staley in the background, too, telling her, uh, like, when the last inbound pass is coming in, like, if you get the shot, take it. Like, basically coaching her, telling her, like, giving her some confidence because she's not a perimeter shooter. This is a player who is 6'7", never shoots from outside ever this is her first three like you said so she's completely unguarded there she's just wide open and she banks it in and wins the game and Tennessee players their coach like despondent Kelly Kelly Harper like can't believe what she just saw it was such a crazy finish only to be outdone then in the SEC championship game on Sunday with the LSU game what she couldn't believe is that she hit a three right the Tennessee coach because that's the play you want like you'll take that shot that's the shot she wanted in that situation she was giving her the shots. Basically, yeah. yeah like right. It, right. And there was a second left on the clock. Like the fact that she even got it off that quickly, too, everything about it was just unbelievable when you watched it live. It was so crazy. Oh, but it's it's not just that though, right? Because that by itself is ridiculous, right? Because the shot, it felt like it was off the top of the backboard. I don't even know how it banked in. It was a terrible shot. And it banked right in. But the part we're leaving out is that Tennessee was up 73-71 with three seconds left and had two free throws and missed them both. So they could have gone up four and ended the game and ended two years of South Carolina winning, Stugatz, without losing and instead missed two free throws and then get your heart broken that way. Remember, uh, you guys made fun of me the uh, last week because something happened uh, in hockey. And I was describing how I felt that feeling before where you make a couple of mistakes and now you're trailing the play and the thing that you feared happening most, you've already imagined worst case scenario fears because you're the one responsible for it and then you watch it happen. If you've missed those two free throws and now you're getting back on defense and committing the foul, all of that is happening in slow motion. They're inbounding the ball. (laughs) Like, you're watching and you're like, I know I missed those two free throws. I could have ended this game with those two free throws. And the rest of what you're watching is you can't sleep for three days after that. And as a Tennessee fan, too, like, you've seen this game before. Like, the Tennessee is a really good team, but they have these games when they're they're playing teams ranked ahead of them where they're so close, but they can't close it out. And, like, this was a game where they had them the entire game. And all South Carolina only needed a two to take it to overtime. And somehow they get the three-point shot and score and end up in the championship game again. It was just, like, absolutely crazy. This weekend was one of the best women's basketball weekends of probably the entire year so far. The four conference championship games and, like, the power conferences yesterday, um, starting with the Iowa-Nebraska game going to overtime, Notre Dame won the ACC, then the South Carolina LSU game, and then USC Stanford, all back to back to back, kind of overlapping, which was a bummer. I wish they had like spaced them out better, but absolutely incredible game, day of basketball. Was there anything good or interesting in the commentary beyond uh, South Carolina and LSU really don't like each other? South Carolina is better than LSU, and well, they're better than everyone. Yeah, but LSU. Well, but I mean, LSU's. They're very LSU good. won the national championship. Yes, I, mean, I know. I'm aware. So okay, but like, so they they might be better than everybody, but LSU is right there with them. And uh, was there anything interesting in the commentary that you heard about the fight? Because uh, tensions escalating to a place where these two teams obviously don't like each other because they're competing for the top of the sport and have been for a couple of years. Any good commentary? Um, well, I mean, I thought what was interesting. From my perspective, was with the last time these teams played, um, it was actually that game that we were talking about rated higher than the, I think it was the Celtics Heat game, that Thursday night yeah. game. Um, the game really swung in like the last couple minutes. So what I was looking forward to at the end of this game was there's two minutes left. LSU had been trailing most of the game. South Carolina kept making shots to keep a lead ahead of them. But 
with two minutes left, I was like, okay, is this game going to have a similar kind of swing where LSU now gets back in it and can somehow win it? Um, but then this happens. So basically, a LSU player committed an intentional foul on a South Carolina player, and then um, there was a bit of like, I wouldn't, I don't even know if you can call it a fight. Like no one threw any punches. It was more more of a, a skirmish, a scuffle, a scuffle yeah. if you will. But then an NBA fight. Camilla Cardoso, who's a player, the one who's six foot seven, with um, she's I don't know if you can see her on the video, but anyway, she comes in right there, pushes the LSU player who fouled her teammate, and then everyone gets up off the benches except for one L, uh, USC player. And if you clear the bench area it's an automatic ejection plus Camila Cardoso got ejected for fighting so now she's going to miss the first game of the NCAA tournament which will be USC will be a one seed so they're going to play a 16 so probably won't impact them too much but initially the broadcast team said that all of the players who got ejected which was both benches plus Camila Cardoso would be out for the first game of the NCAA tournament and that would have been insane because only five players were left on each team um, although South Carolina had like one player who, who didn't get off the bench area so they we're going to need to identify sub. though exactly what this fight was and how to describe it because we have an escalating Bruja. list of tensions we'll get Ballyhoo. you uh we're we're, we're going to get you guys the escalating list of tensions we have an official list that has been created so you guys choose. I have it here there's a lot uh, yeah i know but yeah. choose and are you going top <laughs> to bottom bottom to top what are you what are you doing uh here? okay so the, the the this is the least chic- chicanery Okay, so go. I would to, say it's more, more. Well, than well but hold on. Would you let say him, it's hijinks? Let him get through. I'd say there were hijinks throughout the game and escalated into Malarkey? whatever this okay, is. Okay, I don't want commentary off of each one <laughs> because <laughs> there are many of them. Well, so we're trying just, to figure uh, out. Just, read the list just, and we'll just pick go one. ahead. Just, I don't need commentary <laughs> oh. on each one. I no, know there are I, hundreds. I feel of like them. the process is important. <laughs> yeah. It, okay, but you just tell us when we're in the area. Was it closer to skullduggery or shenanigans? I'd say it's more more than just shenanigans. It was it was larger than a tiff, a spat, or a quarrel, though, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Worse than tomfoolery. Yeah. We mentioned skirmish, but did it escalate to a fracas? Mm. I feel like it's it's in that region. Really? That feels less than hullabaloo. Uh, or ballyhoo. It's in that region. Was it quite at the level of a dust up? Uh, yeah, I would say stuff. it's, a, it's about brouhaha? it's about there. I mean, well, there we was, have to get to you saying just no though. A big shove, a big shove, less, and then less than Armageddon. The LSU player yeah, who yeah, got shoved, yeah, yeah. according to the broadcast, her brother jumped onto the court, so that led to an even further agree to escalation. disagree. <laughs> did the uh. gloves come off? Were there fisticuffs? No, no, hmm, we're definitely no fisticuffs. No fisticuffs. We okay. Gloves no? did not come off. So we didn't get to kerfuffle. Not a kerfuffle. Okay. Or hubbub. Well, no hurly burly uh, wasn't think, a slobber knocker. I don't know if I agree with I think this. It was a hubbub. <laughs> really? What? I think what? skirmish. Did what do we you reach Donny Brook? What do you mean? <laughs> it's the list. <laughs> I think it was a hubbub. Starting is everything when it comes to fitness. Peloton helps you start no matter what level you're at. Wherever you're starting, there's thousands of classes to get you moving. Whether that's beginners or advanced rides, feel-good live DJ rides, or artist-themed rides, they've got something for you. Peloton bike instructors keep you motivated from day one. They'll show you the basics, help take the guesswork out of your workout, and encourage you to build from there. And now with Peloton Entertainment, you can keep moving and watch your favorite TV shows and live sports as you ride. Perfect for those days when you don't want to miss a thing. And if you don't have a bike, take a dance class, take a core class, take Pilates, take a stretching class, start a program with Andy, do a core program with Emma. You can do it all at Peloton. You can get a Peloton row, and you're not even going to get wet because it's inside your own house without water. How'd they do it? I don't know. Wherever you're starting, get moving with a Peloton bike or Bike Plus rental at onepeloton.com slash bike rentals. Terms apply. Don Lebertard. David Sampson, weirdo. Because he was not he was not the fun substitute teacher who'd wheel out a TV and play a VHS tape of Armageddon in science class. He was the, the weird one who would eat an egg salad sandwich while clipping his toenails into the trash can and ranting about Ronald Reagan. Stugatz. And the guy kept talking about how his ass was smooth. Smoother than a newborn's cheek. He wouldn't stop bragging about his bare buttocks to me. This is the Don Levatar Show with the Stugats. (laughs) 
We generally do not do very much with the Oscars, largely skip right past all of the award shows, but Adnan Verk and David Sampson did something giant with the Oscars last night. It was a lot of fun. Our audience really enjoyed it. They really enjoyed it. The least enjoyable part of it was David Sampson getting more of his picks right than anybody he was competing against, oh, and only Jesus. 49 people on all of the internet did better than him. But, well, we'll talk to David about that in a second. But, Adnan, if you have to choose from the following, uh, Al Pacino apparently screwing everything up at the end of the night, uh, the Hill Memoriam uh, video uh, tribute at the end uh, be using the Step Brothers music from the Catalina Wine Mixer, uh, <laughs> Um, uh, Ryan uh, Ryan Gosling as as Ken or John Cena. Like, what was the single? You can only pick one thing. The standout thing from last night is blank. You're saying in a positive sense or negative sense? Anything. You're going negative. Okay, Anything. Well, I'm going to say positive then. I'm going to stay with Nicolas Cage when he went out there. My favorite moment was when previous award winners were honoring nominees. And Nick Cage, we all know, is about as wacky as it gets. I'm sure our audience loves Nick Cage. And he spoke to one of my favorite actors in Paul Giamatti. He said, Paul, in the whole Overs, you wore a soft contact lens, which made you blind in one eye. Would I have done so? Hell yes. And have a whole ovation started going nuts. And he said, but great job by you and killer job as always. I also liked when Tim Robbins went out and was addressing Robert De Niro. He mistakenly said... In your Academy Award winning performance in Killers of the Flower Moon, crowd started laughing because, I mean, Academy Award nominated. You should win this, though. So I just love that concept of bringing back previous award winners to be there. As for my man Pacino, who I adore, you're supposed to say, and the nominees are, and they have the nice little crawl of the nominees, but who cares? We all knew it was going to be Oppenheimer anyways, so Al just skipped to that because opens the envelope because, yeah, Oppenheimer. So I give I give Pacino credit. He wanted to get Abbott Elementary on the air, on time, and we just cut through the fluff. Way to go, Al. He also, he didn't say the winner is is Oppenheimer. He said, I see Oppenheimer. Right. And then everyone was like, what does, there was like a pause before applause because right. no one knew what it meant. hoo -ah! I think Adnan's burying the lead. I think what bothered him the most was being here seven hours, and then at the end, he lost to me. Wow. I think it, that is the true takeaway from last night. I'll say this. Nobody rides a line between loathsome and hateful like David Sampson. I mean, there's, there's, it, it is, you're right. It, it is remarkable, yes. Stu, the way he can do it. I mean, but I, it doesn't seem like the same thing. That doesn't seem like sure a line. What a line that is. But, but I, but I have to give credit where credit is due. My man ran a half marathon yesterday. It's amazing. And then was able to finish first in the pool. He was ahead of me. He was ahead of Ben Lyons, who pitched this entire idea. So Ben now has me with egg on my face. Um, but I think ultimately, I give credit to David on this. When everybody else is zigging, you got to zag. And we both lost in Beth's live action short film because we went with, live in, excuse me, a best animated short film. We both went Letter to a Pig. And David looked at me and goes, Holocaust film. I go, exactly. But he picked it on sound, which was an inspired choice. He went zone of interest, whereas all the rest of us went Oppenheimer. And he also should have used the same logic, which is Holocaust film. So I give him credit because that was a pretty good call by him and a gutsy pick. David, did Pacino air in, in, I mean, that's a very dramatic moment. Everybody's waiting around. Oh, who cares? Exactly. I mean, Stu's right. I mean, the winner is, that's it, the way we have to no, do it. No, no, the nominees and, are. The, the, the nominees are. To. Who cares? Everyone knew who was winning the award at that Correct. point. Way to go, Stu. You give the moment to the uh, nominees. Yeah, it's the Al's moment. The important thing is for the other nine shows to get one more mention. Right. So Ben Lyons pointed this out during the show that you were watching last night, Stu, during your <laughs> travels. I'm positive. Yep, great we show. We saw the mm. number of people watching, and mm. it kept going plus one. One, yeah. which I think was you're you. welcome. Yes. Thank you. It was critical. <laughs> Speaking to all our guys out there, like we got Stu, baby, and and so there's not enough talk of past lives, not enough talk of some of the other nominees, and you want to give them that moment in the sun for being a Best Picture nomination, and Al Pacino just blew it. The problem is you keep sending octogenarians out there. That's what you're going to get if you say so. I had a moment last night where I fully realized that like I'm starting to become washed up and it was when the Oscars wrapped and they had that like, cut to the clip of Messi the dog peeing on Matt Damon's Hollywood star and I was like, wow, I just found this Jimmy Kimmel, Matt Damon beef thing funny. Holy shit. 
I am officially entering my 30s. Jessica <laughs> feeling old is uh, something that I was not, uh, I didn't have it on the bingo card, but there are any number of things around here all the time that are making us feel old, and I want to do a daily segment that recognizes this. Let's begin with whatever you've got today, Jeremy, to make us all feel old. So outside of Jackson Holiday, Matt Holiday's son being like the best player in spring training, not named Juan Soto, and his other son being a number one overall prospect as well. I bring you news that class of 2025 wide receiver Eugene Hilton Jr. No. is down to seven schools. Yep, that's the son of T.Y. Hilton. <laughs> he played like two years ago. T.Y. Hilton's kid getting ready to go to college. We're so old, Dan. We can do this every day. Did, We're going to do it every day. Did you know that Charles Johnson's son has been a professional football player for multiple years? Yes. What? CJ. Yes. yes. CJ. Did you know CJ's No, I had son? no idea. He is, no. He's played for the Broncos for two years. <laughs> I grew up on the, on the same street. I grew up. I lived on the same street in Plantation as Charles Johnson. And it was the most awkward part of my career is the day we traded Charles Johnson and I saw him on the street, which was horrible. And he had little boys. And it blew my mind. I didn't realize, because I don't live on the street anymore. But it, you're old, and Charles Johnson is old. T.Y. Hilton and Jessica are not old. Yeah, but well, well Jess there. is kind of old. Though. Getting there. I mean, <laughs> she's, in her, aged she's me. getting into her 30s. It's uh, not young. T.Y. Hilton... She goes to bed at nine. I mean, <laughs> yeah, T.Y. Hilton well, also ended up at FIU because his son, like he put his West a West Virginia hat and an FIU hat, and his son crawled to the FIU hat, and that's how he chose FIU over West Virginia. Really? And now, yeah. And now his son didn't choose. Would FIU. you trust yeah, your FIU kids with there. doing that? Oh, I don't trust my kids with anything. My kids are idiots. T.Y. Hilton played for the Cowboys <laughs> in 2022. I mean. Uh, David, what do you make of Elon Musk saying on... Listen, let's get back to Oppenheimer. Come on. How does he know your kids are idiots this early? Well, I mean... Are they testing badly, like, in the school No, they're, they're... Well, they're, I mean, a two-year-old and an eight-month-old. So, you, when you know, you know, eight-month-old is an idiot? Well, compared to me. <laughs> He's just adventurous. Put it on the poll, Juju, at Lebitard Show. Are all two-month-olds and eight-month-olds idiot, uh, idiots? What do you make, David, of Elon Musk saying, because I didn't think that this was pervasive last night, but maybe I have it wrong. Uh, winning an Oscar now just means you won the woke contest. No, winning an Oscar means that your rate has increased when you do your next project. But what's happening it is very there? Good but for what's, business. I, but Listen, what's happening there? That Hollywood is liberal. That is that's huge news. That hadn't happened. That's <laughs> that is all because of Trump. Yeah. It's only the last four years that Hollywood's been liberal. So I totally understand that comment. It's absurd. What Add happened? How long what happened been... last night that wins the woke Olympics? Jonathan Glazer won the Oscar for Best International Feature Film for The Zone of Interest. And in his speech, he mentioned the occupation in Gaza. So if you want to see talk politics, he said, my film is about genocide. There's also cruelty taking place right now in the world. We hope for a ceasefire. And 20 Days of Mariupol won, which is a film about what's happening in Ukraine. And the winner said, I would take back this award for you know all the lives that have been lost in Ukraine. So maybe Elon Musk doesn't but like yeah, that's a... <laughs> <laughs> you're questioning that. I don't think he would. It's David. big. David. It is so big to win that category. What are you oh, talking, what? About? talking about? The pain what and suffering. What are you doing? What are you doing? Go sit in the penalty box. Questioning the sincerity. Go sit. Go sit in the penalty box. Go sit out there. He's tired. He's punch drunk. Man, he's been working a lot. He's running. What an excuse. I, I mean, just get out of here. Just go out. What's go his sit. Excuse the rest of the time. Go sit in the penalty box. What Jessica said while I was asking them that question was, I should win the woke Olympics. Because I was up until the end of that I night last night. I stayed awake, but also yeah. shout out to the Oscars. Early start time, early yeah. finish time. Wh what a choice! Best thing they've done in years. Wrapping it up before 10:30 Eastern on the day of daylight saving, spring forward. Big time. Everyone was tired. I didn't know what time it was. My dog didn't know what time it was. I woke up this morning and it was dark out. And I wanted to puke. Uh, thank you to the Oscars. For they were early. rushing through it, Adnan. They they didn't need to. Ru I mean, they go too slow sometimes, but they were. We're in a big rush at the end, yeah. and that's when the payoffs are. 
Yeah, it, it's normally about a three and a half hour show. So to Jess's point, historically for years, it's always started at eight o'clock each and they move it up an hour to seven, thinking it'll end by 1030. So by that logic, they did get out early. They were done by 1022 and they didn't need to play the music off now for costume designer and production designer. Now that I look back, they had more time. And again, if Al had just said, here's the nominees, we would have had a little bit more time. But again, if you want Oscar moments, if you love movies, I think you still appreciate what happened. And again, Oppenheimer, Christopher Nolan is that rare filmmaker, a really cool moment when Spielberg presented best director to him. Christopher Nolan's like today's Spielberg, a guy that makes movies that make a ton of money, but it's also loved by the critics. So it was a pretty cool moment if you like Christopher Nolan, and uh, that gives me an excuse to get Jess to do Bane. What do you mean? <laughs> I am Bane. <laughs> Women's <laughs> basketball in the A block. What a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought the women's game would get more attention than the men's? What a time. I'm now quoting John Reed in a production <laughs> meeting. Uh, Billy, had, uh, Billy had mentioned uh, that uh, there was something about International Women's Day that was bothering him, and I wanted to see it. That is oh, not that is, no, that's exactly that is what you yeah, said. No, that's 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 what what you said. Too much that's what you said. I was there. That's what you said. We <laughs> were all there. We went. That that's how that went. That's how that went. No. He's right. Well, explain yourself. <laughs> explain. Let's hear it, Bill. Okay. Well, then explain yourself. Explain what your complaint was about International Women's Day. And let me just show the audience this first of all, because uh, guys, get for me, please, the video of LeBron James this weekend that everyone was delighting over because uh, Kurt Ramis's wife, I believe her name is Linda, yeah. uh, and Jeannie Buss were pawing at LeBron James uh, in, a in a way that made me think everybody had been drinking. I yeah. thought everybody had been, I don't know what time of day it was. A lot was. of touching of biceps. Yeah, there's yeah. A, lot of, a lot of touching, and LeBron James, their lip readers have now gathered and realized that the way that he won this moment is by just saying, first of all, Happy International Women's Day. And just look at this. What he gets after that is just coquettish snuggling from all the parties involved. Uh, Billy, what was your objection to International I Women's Day? I have no objection That's not to true. International Women's Billy? Day. That's not Billy, what happened. Billy, you this had an video objection. Played. No, this Billy? video played. Tell the truth. This video played, and what I said was, on that day, I went to farm stores, which is like a local, you know, little drive-up convenience store where they overcharge you for everything. And I went and I bought a pizza next door and I wanted to have soda with the pizza, so I asked for a soda, which for a two-liter soda there was like $4, which is like ridiculous because it's a drive-up convenience store. And then they asked me on the way out, would you like to buy an orchid for International Women's Day for $13? And I said, no, I would not. I would like a soda and that's it. This isn't like a dollar for charity. You're now asking me for 13 extra dollars for an orchid I didn't ask for. And that's all I said about International Women's Day. That was it. That was my entire You said comment. women were gouging you. I didn't say that. They're I always out for your money. Pawing at you. Yeah. The store was trying to gouge you. It was an upsell. <laughs> I didn't say any of those things. I did say, though, that this is an international holiday. And I asked Jeremy when this dated back to because I wasn't familiar with the origins of this holiday. But I said it was incredible that there's no world peace, but every nation in the world celebrates International Women's Day. That's what I said. Hmm. Do you not think it's woke? I think he cleaned it up. I think that's fair. Why are we giving women just a day? I wow. mean, seriously, they yeah. deserve a month. Yeah. They deserve a year. Why yeah, are we Stu. just giving them a Stu. day? Way to go. Way to go, it? Stu. Way to go, Stu. Save doing? the whales. Well, a day? Pay the teachers. Please. Support the troops. I mean, save the whales. You're a simp. <laughs> Hello, friends. It's Mike, and a lot has changed over the years. One thing that hasn't, great taste of Miller Lite. It was the original light beer, and to this day, it is still the best one. Miller Lite has more of the taste that you want and less of the stuff that you don't. I'm so grateful for Miller Lite because it supplements all my good times. It makes good times great times. Whether it be football season, basketball season, or baseball season, in all likelihood, your team is not living up to expectations. A few good moments made better by Miller Lite, and the bad times are made less bad thanks to Miller Lite. Oh, I love you, Miller Lite. I love you because you keep it simple. Undebatable quality. Great taste. Only 96 calories. Times change, but you can always enjoy the great taste of Miller Lite. Tastes like Miller time. To get Miller Lite delivered right to your door, visit MillerLite.com Dan, where you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories per 12 ounces. 
Every fan knows the right player in the right position can be a game changer. Put LifeLock between your identity and identity thieves to monitor and alert you to threats you could miss. Plus, with a U.S.-based restoration specialist on your team, you won't have to face drained accounts, fraudulent loans, or other losses from identity theft alone. All backed by the LifeLock Million Dollar Protection Package. Change the game on identity theft. Save up to 25% your first year at LifeLock.com slash aware.